The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. I'm going to flip back to Romans chapter number 1 and verse number 1 tonight and read three things that the Apostle Paul confesses. In verse number 1 of chapter number 1, Paul, he says, a servant number one of Jesus Christ. He's a servant. And then he said called to be an apostle. And then he said separated under the gospel of God. I want to begin there tonight by the help and grace of God to bring a message that the Lord has put upon my heart. Paul said that he was separated under the gospel of God. And then he said in verse number 16, he talks about the power of uh, but, uh, the gospel of Christ he said for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation with all my heart tonight I believe that as Paul is pinning these words down here in his heart and his mind he'll never forget on the road to Damascus where he met the Lord Jesus Christ a light shone about all about and Paul fell to the ground. He said, now wait a minute, preacher. He, his name is Saul. You read the book of Acts chapter 13. He said, Saul, who is also called Paul. And so nobody renamed him. He's just another name for Saul. But Paul pinned this down. And in his mind, in his heart, I believe that he's thinking about the road to Damascus. The light that shone round about him, he fell to his knees. The voice from heaven spoke against him and said, Saul, Saul, why kickest thou against the pricks? And Saul said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. I believe that that pierced the heart of Paul while he was there on the ground. The Bible said that he rose up, his eyes were blinded for three days, he had no sight at all. But dear friend, he was led by the arm down to Damascus. He remembered before that he persecuted the saints of God. He made havoc of the church of God. He despised the saints of God. He hated all of those, the Bible said, that were in that way. That is the way of following Jesus Christ as their personal savior. Now stay with me tonight because I want to give you something tonight from the Word of God that God has so placed upon my heart. There he is led down to Damascus. And the Bible said that uh, Paul was praying. He was on his face praying and God sent a vision. And in that vision, Paul seen a man by the name of Ananias that would come and lay hands on him that he might receive his sight. And at the same time, the scripture said that God spoke to a man by the name of Ananias and said, I want you to go down to Damascus. There's one Saul of Tarsus that I want you to lay hands upon that he might receive his sight. And Ananias said, just a minute, I've heard a lot of things about Saul. I've heard where he's called danger against the church in Jerusalem and said, yet the Lord spoke and said this, said he has, yeah, but he said, he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles, before the Jews, and also unto the kings of that day. So Paul was separated for a reason. God ordained him to be a preacher of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. He ordained him first. The Bible said this, that when the Paul's eyes were open, he went down to the synagogue, there to the Jews, and he preached that Jesus is the very Christ, that he is the Son of God, that he is the one that was ordained of old, that would fulfill the scripture and come and shed his blood upon a cross. And listen, friend, there was people that got saved by the marvelous 
grace of God, they were astonished at Saul's words. They were astonished at his preaching because they knew of his past. Have you ever tried to talk to somebody that knew all about your past? Try to witness to them and tell them what God done for you? All they could do was throw your past up in front of you. I'm glad, thank God tonight, and listen, this is shouting ground for me, uh, that everything I've ever done in my past, uh, everything that's wrong, uh, it doesn't matter. Listen, I failed yesterday. I failed, I failed them all. I failed last year, and so did you. But thanks be unto God that He said to us, that if we confess our sins, uh, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins uh, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So dear friend, uh, when you come to me uh, and try to throw my past up in my face, uh, I've got an advocate with the Father, uh, Jesus Christ the righteous. Uh, you go talk to Him tonight. Uh, oh, listen, sometimes I'll get down uh, and I'll begin praying and I'll think about that old past uh, that the devil would drudge up before me uh, and I'll have to start asking God please forgive me uh, and it's like that old song uh, what sins are you talking about uh, listen when God forgives uh, he forgets tonight uh, I may not forget and you may not forget uh, but God has the ability tonight to forget our sins uh, when he sees me, thank God tonight he sees the blood of his precious son. You can call me whatever you want. I'm happy. I'm satisfied. Glory to God. I feel like tonight that I'm awaiting in the rivers of the living God. I feel the power of glory to God tonight of the Holy Ghost of God here this evening. Thank you, Lord, for answering my prayer. Thank you, Lord, for those that have prayed for me tonight. I want you to know that Paul found something that I say it's not a secret at all. But all of us know tonight, he said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Oh, listen, that word power that Paul's talking about right there, that means it's a miraculous power. It's not my ability. It's not your ability. But that is an act of Almighty God. That's the power that we're saved by the Holy Spirit of God. If you'll remember tonight, our Lord Jesus Christ said, I if I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me. And in John chapter number 6 and verse number 44, I believe it is, he said all, verse 37, he said, all that the Father to give it to me shall come to me, and he that cometh to me, he said, I'll in no wise come to cast them out. Then in verse number 44, he said this, the Father will draw them. There's something about that power tonight of the gospel of the grace of God that has a drawing power. It has a pulling power. I went over there this afternoon in John chapter number 8 and I got to reading about them old Pharisees and scribes and they went out and they were just testing the Lord Jesus Christ and they found a woman that was in adultery and they brought them and threw them before the Lord Jesus Christ and said listen this woman was caught in adultery in the very act I mean they must have walked back in the bedroom where she was at how they knew where she was that's between them and God yeah, that's exactly right. And listen tonight, they brought her and put her down at the feet of Jesus and the very lawgiver himself, those Pharisees tried to tell him what the book said. Said, now Moses in the law said that such an one as this should be stoned to death, but what do you say? And the Bible said this, that Jesus acted like he didn't hear a word they said. He knelt down on the ground and with the finger of God, 
He wrote something there in the ground, is what the scripture said. He stood back up and they asked him again. And then he stooped down a second time. And he wrote in the, in, the, in the ground again. I don't have a clue what he wrote, but whatever it was, the Bible said that they were convicted in their conscience. They were smote inside of them. They were caught. They couldn't hide in the closet anymore. Their sins inside of them was all out in the open. And from the eldest to the youngest, they left one by one. And Jesus was left there alone with that woman there on the ground. And he looked there and said, Where are those thine accusers? And she looked around and said, There are none. And he said this, Neither do I condemn thee, but go and sin no more. Are you ready to shout right there what? I'm telling you, God bless your heart. If you ever get your sins forgiven, you ever get right with God, you want to shout the praises of the Almighty God. I've got some things I want to talk about tonight. The first three chapters of the book of Romans, the Apostle Paul tells us about the depravity of man, how wicked we are. He said we're ungodly. He said we're unrighteous. He said there's none of you that seek after God. He said there's none that's good. He said this, that their throat is an open sepulcher. And if you read in chapter number one, I'm telling you we're living in that day if we ever were today. This that gone wicked society has begun to pervert our minds. I was walking here the other day, you know, and I can't remember where I was at, but you know, you see two guys walking together and the first thing you think about, are they queer? That's where we're at today. You don't ever know. It might be your next door neighbor. But the Bible said this, that God looked down upon that and he said unto them, dear friend, that they, that their hearts, that God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. We're in a wicked, ungodly society. Chapter number three, you go home and read it. And all he talks about how wicked we are. And I have to say, yes, you're right. You're exactly right. We're ungodly. We don't seek after God. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We are in a sin-sick world. It's diseased by sin. Our world has a cancer eating it. Not just the United States of America. I'm talking about the world. But may I say that things that go on in this nation would be an abomination in other nations. I'm gonna tell you, you ever get saved by the grace of God, born again, you won't have to have nobody teach you how to worship. We're begotten by the Word of God, and God chose the foolishness of preaching to save. The Apostle Paul said this in 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, he said this. He said, for I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the gospel. Christ died for our sins. He became sin who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Paul knew there's some kind of power in the gospel. He had a desire. He had long time wanted to go to Rome and preach if you read in chapter number one and, and said he tried to go but said he was hindered. He was hindered to go. And finally the door opened up and, and Paul's about to go preach unto them and he's going to preach to them the most common faith that they had one with another. No, oh, listen, if you're saved by God's grace tonight and you meet another brother or sister in Christ and you begin to speak one with another, you know right off I'm talking about our hearts blending, our spirits blending one with another, our spirits witnessing one with another that you belong to Christ and I belong to Christ and that we're brothers and sisters in our Lord Jesus Christ. When you preach the gospel, if you've never felt that conviction, 
if you're sitting here tonight under the sound of my voice and you're listening to these words tonight and you've never felt that drawing, that conviction, I'll never forget that night. Never, 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 never. Sitting there, the preacher preaching heaven sweet and hell hot. I thought I was the only one in the building. I'm telling you, God zeroed in on me. I, I felt that conviction set on me. I felt the wrath of God down upon me and said, if you don't get saved tonight, this is your last opportunity. I remember a year before that, my wife got saved a little over a year before I did. I remember going to a church and I went down to the altar. My wife was putting pressure on me. Went down to the altar, mumbled a few words, but there was no drawing. I went back and told the guys there on base when I was in the army, I said, I got religion, and that's all I got. Some of you tonight may, may be play acting, like you really got something, but you never did. You ever get what Paul got? You ever get what I got? You ever get what any other saint of God got? There'll be a transformation in your life. If there's no transformation, there is no salvation. No transformation, no salvation, no change. I'm going to tell you something. God will change you. said, preacher, you're going, to, you're, you're going to mess up. Yeah, I've messed up many times. I've done things I ought not do, but I'm glad that I have an advocate with the Father. But you see, listen, when I got saved by God's grace, He said this, that we become the sons of God. Now that I got saved, I can't even describe the words of the change that came in my heart. I can't sing a lick, I can't carry a tune, but I was singing Amazing Grace going down the interstate. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Man, I'm telling you, and I stood up at that altar that night, it's like the entire world lifted off my shoulders. And I said, man, something different's happened here. Something's changed on the inside of me. And I began to sing Amazing Grace, me and Shelly together. I'm telling you, my heavenly Father came down and blessed my soul. And I found out that I had a heavenly Father, not just an earthly Father, but He became my heavenly Father. Some of you dead as a doornail, like a knot on a log. Surely to goodness, there's something in you tonight that's a charge in your battery. I'm telling you, it's just like putting the, the battery, just connecting the battery cables from heaven right down to my heart. I'm I'm so glad I got born into the family of God. Thank God for it tonight. You don't feel that, you need to get plugged in the right socket. I'm telling you something, the Spirit of God will rejuvenate you. He'll charge you. If what you got's real tonight, it'll be in you just like you told that Samaritan woman. It'll be in you like a well of water springing up in everlasting life. I'm going to tell you something that happened. You just drive it down the road and start singing a little song to you and Jesus. All of a sudden, you got another pastor in the truck with you. You just feel that presence move in. It's so real. You feel the glory of God, then all of a sudden you feel them tears dripping down off your face and, and you're shouting and praising God and everybody passing by you when you slow down in the slow lane, looking at you like you're an idiot. Listen, I might be a nut, but I'm screwed on the right boat. That's right. I'm having a good time. Just let me have it. If you don't want it, just send it my way. Paul, he preached the gospel. He knew there's power in the gospel. Brother Barry's seen this, and I know I've seen it. We've both preached in the prison. We've both preached in the jail. We've seen hardened criminals just by the preaching of the gospel. Men and women alike that's broken the law repeatedly over and over and over, and, and, and they almost come to the place that they look like a give up on case. It, it's not worth my time any longer. Oh, I've watched the power of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ begin to humble that heart and break them down and get under conviction and fall down upon their face and weep and cry like a baby and stand up born again and their lives change completely. The gospel of the grace of God will break you down. The Holy Ghost will humble you and He'll draw you to the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to what Paul says. He said this in verse number 21, beginning chapter number three. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short 
of the glory of God. Being justified freely. What's that word justified mean, preacher? It means this to, risen, to render innocent. Freely means that he, he gratefully does it as gratitude. Freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom he has set forth to be a propitiation. That means he's our mercy seat, he's our sacrifice, he's our covering. He has made him to be sin for us. He became sin, our sin. That's all right, that's, that's good imagine to think about every sin in this world, the most heinous of any crime, the most heinous, ugliest sin even imaginable to mankind. Christ became that sin on the tree. He was cursed for you and I. Cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree. He was cursed for us. He took your sins and he took my sins and they were nailed on the tree. His back was laid open with a cat of nine tails. His beard was plucked out by the roots. He was spat in the face. They beat a crown of thorns down upon his head. They nailed him to the cross and dropped him in the ground. For three solid hours, the Son of God hung there. And all of a sudden, about noontime, the skies got darkened. The sun's light was put out. Christ became our sin. The sixth hour, he said, it is finished. In my hands, I come in my spirit. And he gave up the ghost. He didn't just swirl the cross. He died. Bible said he tasted death for every man. He said, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for remission. Thank God for remission. That's forgiveness. Remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. He's our justifier. He said, but as many as received him, to them gave him power. That's authority, liberty, the right to become the sons of God. I'll never forget the night I got saved. Paul will never forget the night he got saved. I hope tonight with all my heart that you're sitting here this evening that you have a place, a time. You might not even remember the day. You might not remember the hour, but you know in your heart there's a place and time that you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You can't receive him until he, you're drawn to that conviction. The Father, the Holy Spirit of God will convict you. The Father will draw you. Christ will save you and the Holy Ghost will seal you until the day of redemption. Do you know that you know that you know that you say by the grace of God? You better know that you know that you know that you pass from death unto life. You better know, as Brother Barry preached this morning, that your name's not still in Adam's book, but it's written in the Lamb's book of life. If it's not, you can get it wrote there tonight. It's simple. All you got to do is believe, trust, ask Him for whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's that simple. Notice also in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boastful, proud, blasphemous. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.